Since the deep learning revolution of the last decade, we've seen a surge of collaborations between vision neuroscience and computer vision. While these collaborations have proven really fruitful and already changed the way in which we research visual intelligence, this multidisciplinary symbiosis is still at its infancy. We contribute to accelerating this interaction with a new data resource that we hope will further bridge neuroscience and computer science specifically for the function of visual object recognition. In our everyday life, we can effortlessly recognize different objects present in visual scenes in just a fraction of a second. This capability is called visual object recognition and is made possible through complex nonlinear transformations occurring in the visual brain. To predict and explain these transformations, computational neuroscientists more and more employ machine and deep learning modeling techniques. However, state-of-the-art models require massive amounts of data to properly train. Just think of the ImageNet competition where models are trained on more than 1 million images. And on the other hand, brain datasets are typically three orders of magnitude smaller. To bridge this gap, recently there have been large-scale data collection efforts with both fMRI and MEEG, However, given the limited amount of experimental time, there is a trade-off between sampling many subjects, which is useful for generalizing findings from one brain to another, and sampling visual variation within single subjects, which is useful for having a complete picture of any single brain. Ideally, one would want a dataset which scores highly on both number of subjects and trials per subject. Therefore, to contribute to this ideal, here we collected a large and rich data set of EEG responses to images of objects, so to better bridge the neural dynamics of the visual brain on the one hand and state-of-the-art computational models on the other. The stimuli of our data set all consisted of images of objects on natural backgrounds, and since model building involves independent training and testing phases, we divided the stimuli images into training and test split. The training split consisted of 1,654 object concepts with 10 different exemplars per concept for a total of more than 16,000 unique images. The test split consisted of 200 object concepts with one exemplar per concept for a total of 200 unique images. We then presented these images to 10 subjects over the course of four experimental sessions while recording their brain responses through EEG. This allowed us to strike a good balance between sampling different subjects and sampling visual variation within single subjects. To maximize the amount of image trials presented during the four experimental sessions, while at the same time ensuring that subjects paid attention to these images, we used a rapid serial visual presentation paradigm, in short RSVP, combined with a target detection task. The RSVP paradigm consisted of rapid sequences of 20 images, at the end of which subjects were instructed to blink and to report with a key press whether a target image was present in the sequence. This is a short movie of what the experiment was like. You can see that although the images are changing really fast, you can still recognize the content of each of them. Our experimental paradigm allowed us to, struct, to collect a data set of unprecedented size. For each subject, we presented each of the 16,000 training images four times, resulting in around 66,000 trials per subject, and since the data set included 10 subjects, around 660,000 trials in total. Similarly, we presented each of the 200 test images 80 times, resulting in 16,000 trials per subject, and 160,000 trials, 1,000 trials across all 10 subjects. This is our dataset scores compared to the other datasets I showed you previously. It includes more subjects than most of them, while at the same time sampling each subject at least three times more than any of them. Next, I will present you two of the computational modeling analyses to which we established the quality of this dataset where each of these analyses addresses a different question. The, qu the first question regards encoding models. 
Encoding models are nowadays a widely used method in computational visual neuroscience to both predict and explain the neural mechanisms of vision. And they consist of algorithms, typically based on a deep learning architecture such as AlexNet, that take images as input and output the corresponding neural response. So far, encoding models have mostly leveraged deep learning architectures already pre-trained on computer vision tasks. And yet, since computer vision tasks are not based on neural data, these models might not well reflect the representations of the visual brain. Instead, with a novel approach called end-to-end -end encoding, deep learning architectures are directly trained with brain data, specifically on the task of predicting neural responses to arbitrary images. And this makes end-to-end -end encoding interesting for at least two reasons. First, relevant to neuroscientists, training complex computational algorithms directly with brain data could lead to models with visual representations more aligned to the visual representations of the brain. Second, relevant to computer scientists, infusing computer vision models with brain data might be a useful inductive bias to improve both the performance and robustness of such models. So with, with the first question, we asked whether we can leverage the unprecedented size of our EEG dataset to train end-to-end -end encoding models of the visual brain, starting from randomly initialized AlexNet architectures. To train these end-to-end -end encoding models, we used our trained data split. In detail, we use the real EEG responses for the training images collected during our experiment and model the channel's response of each EEG time point independently, since the EEG signal is made out of different channels that sample brain activity over time. We then gave the same training images as input to randomly initialize AlexNet architectures and trained them to predict the corresponding brain responses. Once our encoding models trained, we evaluated them using a test data split. We fed the test images to the trained AlexNet encoding models and predicted the corresponding EEG responses. We then took the real EEG responses to the same test images that we recorded during our experiment and compared the similarity of the two data instances through a Pearson's correlation. In this graph, the y-axis indicates the correlation score between real and predicted EEG data. The x-axis indicates the temporal development of this correlation before and after time zero, which is when a given image appeared on the screen during the experiment. And the gray region represents the filling between the noise ceiling lower and upper bounds, which indicate the theoretical maximum correlation score given the noise in the EEG data. This is the temporal evolution of the correlation. The correlation starts being significant at 60 milliseconds after image onset, with a peak at around 100 milliseconds, and remains significant until 600 milliseconds. This shows that the end-to-end -end encoding models well predict the EEG responses to images, at times even reaching the noise ceiling level and thus accounting for most of the explainable EEG variance. So going back to our original question, yes, our EEG dataset allows successful training of randomly initialized DNNs in an end-to-end -end fashion. Next, with the second computational modeling analysis, we addressed the following question. Can we leverage the prediction accuracy of our encoding models to build zero-shot identification algorithms? Where zero-shot identification algorithms are algorithms that identify the image conditions subjects were viewing directly from their brain responses and without ever being trained on those image conditions, which is relevant, for instance, in the engineering of brain-computer interface technology. Jumping to the results, the y-axis indicates the identification accuracy, whereas the x-axis indicates the amount of possible alternative image conditions against which the true image condition was tested. For example, an accuracy of 40% with an image set size of 30,000 images indicates that the algorithm identified 40% of image conditions correctly among 30,000 possible alternatives. 
Similarly, an accuracy of 20% with an image set size of 120,000 images indicates that the algorithm identified 20% of image conditions correctly among 120,000 possible alternatives. These are the results we got. As expected, the identification accuracy monotonically decreases with increasing image set sizes and is still at 20% with an image set size of 150,000 images. Furthermore, even when an image condition is not correctly identified, our algorithm often selects image conditions conceptually and visually similar to the correct one. Therefore, these results show that our algorithm can reliably identify neural data conditions above chance in a zero-shot fashion, even among hundreds of thousands of possible alternatives. We believe our EEG dataset to be a suitable candidate for several lines of research, including testing hypotheses of visual object recognition mechanisms, since we now have a dataset which more than ever before samples the visual space, developing new high temporal resolution models and theories of vision, such as end-to-end -end encoding models, analyzing the representational geometry of visual objects thanks to the high amount of different object conditions and trials, developing zero-shot identification and decoding algorithms, developing inner subject mapping algorithms by combining the data of the 10 different subjects present in a dataset, and contributing to the emergent field of neuro-AI, since our dataset is large enough to train deep learning models. Our dataset also comes with some limitations. First of all, the rapid image sequences of the RSVP paradigm introduce backward and forward noise in the data. However, thanks to this paradigm, we extensively sampled single subjects more than ever before, while still obtaining high quality data, as shown by our computational modeling analyses. Second, the stimuli consisted of objects centered on the image, with little to no background clutter, and subjects were asked to constantly gaze at a central fixation target, which is not representative of naturalistic vision. Future data collection efforts could focus on more naturalistic stimuli, such as videos, and more naturalistic experimental designs, for example, allowing for free eye movements. Third, the subject's sample is biased towards young adults which might not be representative of how visual object recognition occurs in infants, children, or the elderly. Future studies could investigate potential age-related differences by collecting large amounts of visual responses from subjects across the lifespan. Finally, to promote open science and allow for rapid scientific development, we share the paper, data, and code of this dataset in an open format, easily accessible to anyone through the following QR code.